Hey there, everybody. So, it's been a long, long time, but I am finally back. Um, got a couple requests to make a video about doing some animation when keys are pressed that make a character move, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, and hopefully I'll get more requests in the future and I'll be able to make more videos just like this. So, I made kind of a basic world just to get us started out here. And what I'm going to do is drop a character asset that I got from the asset store right into here. And we can get him moving. Um, so I got this samurai from the asset store. All I really did was go and look under the uh, popular free assets thing and grab the first character I saw. But the key with this guy is he's got animations already attached to him. Uh, you're not going to be able, as far as I know, to make animations for a character within Unity. They have to come from another application like Blender or Maya or 3DS, uh, 3DS Max or something like that. So this guy's already got his animations, and he's extra convenient because he's got all the animations that are kind of made to work with the Unity character controller. Idle, walk, run, and jump. So he's got all those. And then he also has an attack uh, animation that's not built into that controller, but we're going to get that working anyway. Um, so I'm going to grab him, drop him right into the world. There he is. And he's looking pretty good. we got to get him moving. So if I go ahead and press play, first of all, let me position my camera. If I press play, I'm going to stare at him standing there doing nothing. He plays his default animation, which in this case is jump. I thought it was going to be idle. Um, so we want to change that to idle so he idles by default. And then we want to uh, get those other animations working. So let's see. If we go ahead and click on him, you can see right here under his animations uh, list, he's got five different animations. And under animation up at the top, this is the default one. So that's the one you want to be idle. So if I switch that to idle, I'm going to make sure it's not the wrong animation. Here we go. Same as I animation. That's the one we want. Select idle. Now if I press play, you should idle by default. There he is. So he's idling. So uh, first we got to get him moving and animating, which actually is going to be fairly straightforward. It doesn't require really any code at all. Uh, it's all done within the Unity interface. So what we're going to do is use the three components that are built into Unity, or at least they come in a package that comes with Unity, uh, that are going to help us do this. Um, so if you haven't done this yet, what you want to do is go up to your Assets menu and import the Character Controller package. So I've already done this, but if I click on this, it's going to uh, give me the option to import all this stuff. And normally I would click Import, but I've already done this, so I'm going to go ahead and close that. Um, but that will appear in your Standard Assets folder right here under Character Controllers. So you'll get your third-person controller, your first-person controller. Uh, but you also get scripts that are automatically added to your component menu. So that's either this menu up here at the top, or this menu right over here for each object. So I'm going to open up his add component menu. I'm going to go down to scripts. And there are two possible scripts that came in that package, third person camera and third person controller. So I'll add both of those. There's third person camera. And there's third person controller. You'll notice with third person controller, we also get a um, character controller component that comes with that. Oops. So uh, that character controller is a collider that goes around this object, the, the samurai, um, and determines where he is and what he runs into, etc., etc. So I may actually want to do a little editing with that. You'll notice it doesn't show up in exactly the optimal position. Uh, in fact, by default, he's going to fall right through because his collider is sticking through the ground. And if I pick him up, you can see that the collider is it's not exactly in the right place for him. So I'm just going to adjust those options a little bit. Uh, I'm just going to grab the center and move it up. And that's really all the change I need to make. I can make it a little wider, but I won't even bother. That looks pretty good. Um, so now that I've got my character controller set up, everything's good to go. I'll go ahead and press play and show you what that looks like. Uh, oops. Let's press play. You can see now we can control him. He doesn't animate, but he moves. That's what the character controller lets you do. It moves him around. And with some additional setup, we should actually be able to get animation as well. So, let's do it. I'm going to go in here. And you notice in the third person controller component, this is the component that actually controls him, uh, he's got spots for four animations. Idle, walk, run, and jump, the four I mentioned before. So we can actually grab those and drop them right in here. So I'm going to go ahead and choose his idle animation, his walk animation. So what I'm doing is taking animations that are already in Unity, they're already in my project, and I'm going to just specify that these are the ones that I want to, to play when each of these actions happens. So I don't walk, run, and jump are already here. They're in his uh, his character pack folder here. 
Actually, they're in this prefab. No. They're in this prefab. There we go. There they are. Those are the files. And here I'm just specifying that these are the animations I want to play in each of these situations. So let's press play again, see what that looks like. Alright, so now he walks, he runs when I hold shift, he jumps, and he'll idle if I just stand there. You can even make some changes, like maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll change his angular max speed so the camera turns a little bit faster. So now I can run around, the camera will follow me. It's looking pretty good, right? The only thing left to do is attack because we haven't fit that animation in here yet. So we've got the animation, but it hasn't been applied to him. So there's nothing we can do right now to make him attack. This is where we're going to start coding because attack is not a built-in animation that's part of the, the kind of standard Unity character controller. Uh, it's a different separate thing that we're going to have to implement ourselves. So what we're going to do is create a script to do that for us. So uh, let's do that. We're going to go ahead and create a new script. And you can do that right in here if you want by clicking Add Component and going to New Script. Or you can uh, make it from the Assets menu right here. There's several ways to do it. I'll go ahead and do it from the, the Add Component menu. So I'm going to add a script. It's going to be not a previous script, but a new one. Here we go, New Script. And we'll call it uh, Attack. That's what it's going to do. And then it creates the script. And if I double click on it, it'll open up my script editor, which I've got right here. I'll make that a little bit smaller so you guys can see it. There we go. Uh, and also, I'll choose the right syntax. So uh, I'll go with Unity 3D JavaScript. So now everything will highlight just right. So uh, let's talk about how to get him to animate. So the command for animation starts with animation, as you might imagine, uh, because we're talking to the animation component of the current object. So this is the object the script is attached to, which means when we type animation, we're talking to its animation component. So we're giving an instruction to this animation component. And each of these components has a whole bunch of methods that, uh, that'll do certain things. Then you can also set each of these properties that you see here. So animation, sorry, I'm just switching windows here. Animation has a method called play that will play an animation. And it takes an argument, which is the name of the animation that's going to be played. So in this case, it's attack. Okay, so that's the command to play an animation. Now, if we just put in our script like this, we're not really going to get anywhere. Because the only functions in here that are actually going to run are start and update, and they run at specified times. I may have talked about this in a previous video. But start runs at the start of the, uh, when the object's created, which in most cases is at the start of the game. And then update runs every frame, so many times per second. So if we leave this out here, it's never going to run. If we put it inside one of those functions, then it will run at that specified time. So let's imagine I put it in update. What would happen is animation.play would run 30 to 60 times per second, or however many frames you've got. And it would happen over and over and over again, which is not really what we want. What we want is to be able to keep track of when the player presses a key. And we want to play the animation only when that key is pressed. So we're actually going to go ahead and uh, specify that we only want to play the animation if the key is pressed. So there's a command that we can use to check for a key press. It's input.getKeyDown. And then that takes an argument, which is the key that we're looking for. So I'm going to use L, just because it's conveniently located for me. You can use whatever key you want. Uh, make sure you put in a lowercase letter here, otherwise it's not going to work right. Now input.getKeyDown returns true or false, depending on whether the key is down at the moment that it's called. So by itself, that's not going to do anything for us. What we want to do is use that information to make a decision. So we're going to go ahead and say if input.getKeyDown L. So either that condition will be true or false. And then if it's true, then we want to play this animation. So let's save our script, see what happens. I'm telling you right now, this is not going to be perfect, but it will be a start. So let's see what happens when we run this. Let's go ahead and press play. Here we are in the game. I'm going to press L. And you notice the animation starts, but it doesn't play all the way through. The reason for that is kind of interesting. So um, the reason that the animation doesn't play all the way through is because the attack animation that you're trying to play and the idle animation that are already happening are on the same animation layer. Now, I won't go in too deep into animation layers because, to be honest, I don't totally understand it yet. Something I have to look into a little bit more. But 
animation layers uh, help you play multiple animations at the same time so they don't conflict with each other. So I'm pretty sure the default layer is zero. So what we're actually going to do is set this animation so that it's on layer one. And that way it's going to be a higher layer than idle, which means it will play uh, when we press the button. So we're actually going to put that command under start because we don't need it to run every frame. We only need it to run once. So we're going to put it at start when the game or when the object is first created. And it's going to be animation attack. So we're, we're talking specifically to this attack animation. So it's going to be animation attack dot layer. And we'll set that equal to one. So now animation dot attacks layer animation attacks layer is going to be on layer one. So not the same layer as idle. So save that. Jump into the game. See what it looks like. All right, so I pressed L again. And now he's playing all the way through the animation, which is awesome. That's exactly what we want, except the animation's looping. So it plays, but now it just plays forever and ever and ever and ever. So there's another thing we have to do before it's going to behave the way we want. We have to set, we have to set that animation so that it only plays once. Um, so what we're actually going to do is use a, an option called Wrap Mode that's going to help us determine whether that animation wraps or loops like it is now or whether it only gets played once. So there are a few different options you can use for wrap mode, but the option that we want is called once. And just like our layer, we only have to set that uh, property one time. You don't have to keep setting it over and over the way we have to keep checking for key presses over and over. So we're gonna put this instruction under start because we only have to do it once. So it's gonna be animation attack dot wrap mode. And we're going to set that property to wrap mode dot once. We'll save that. So wrap mode dot once represents wrapping a single time, and we're setting the wrap mode property of this animation to wrap mode dot once. So let's try that. Go ahead and press play. Press L, and our animation plays one time. So now I can run around, control my character as normal, and when I want to attack, I just press the key we attack one time. So this is starting to look much more like what you expect to see uh, with a character animation. So he's looking pretty good. Uh, I can go in here and make other tweaks like um, personally I would want to tweak things like the, the speed that the camera moves at. So I can just go ahead and change that. So the camera moves a little bit faster. Eventually you're going to kind of get to the point where you feel out the way you want your controller to work. But he animates right, controller's working, everything's looking good. Uh, so thanks for checking this out, guys. If you have more suggestions for videos, go ahead and leave them in the comments. Otherwise, uh, I would love it if you'd subscribe or thumb up the video, because that gets more people in here, generates more questions, which means there's more videos I can make. So have fun, good luck, let me, let me know what you guys make.